Good morning and welcome to this service of Christian hope and comfort for Helen Joyce Crook. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please rise. In holy baptism, Helen Joyce Crook was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. We pray together, or we pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness to all your servants who have finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful to death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In our time of sorrow, there is no greater comfort than the words that come from our Heavenly Father and His Holy Word. Our first reading from the 30 or 23rd Psalm expresses the joyful trust and comfort we find in our Shepherd King. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading from Revelation points us to the blessings of heaven that all believers in Christ may look forward to. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. In our final reading from the Gospel of John, we hear Jesus' words of comfort as he describes the eternal home that awaits us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We continue with our hymn, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb, found in LSB 740.
dear Connie and children, dear family and friends of Joyce Crook, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you have a favorite Bible verse? On a day like today, during a service like this, maybe it's the 23rd Psalm that comes to mind. It's often held as a favorite for many for because of the words of comfort and assurance that it is the Lord himself who leads and guides. The Lord who is the shepherd of his people. And as a result, as we just sang, that we are Jesus' little lamb. Maybe for some, it's the hopefulness that comes when Jesus says that he's going to prepare a place for us in the house of his Father. Making us a room in the great house of God, our Heavenly Father. The picture painted in Revelation can surely make that a favorite as we look forward to a time when the struggles and challenges and tears of this world will be no more. Or maybe on a day like today, a favorite is when Jesus speaks words of life at the death of his friend Lazarus, speaking comfort to Lazarus' sister Mary or Martha. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. We are still in this season of Easter, and the joyful shout of Christ's resurrection continues to echo, even now in the face of death and our own grieving and loss. Favorites are different for all of us, and for different reasons. Joyce had a favorite portion of Scripture, and it serves as our meditation today. From Isaiah 41, the Lord says, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then a little bit later in verse 13, it says, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, Fear not. I am the one who helps you. If you're sick or in the hospital, these are good words to hear. And over the years, I know that they were shared often with Joyce for her encouragement to remind her just who she was in God's eyes, to give her the assurance that God was present with her in whatever circumstance she might be going through. Joyce would say, I'm not afraid to die. I know where I'm going. For a believer, it's a shorthand way of saying, I know my Savior. I know the one upon whom my eternal salvation rests. As those for whom Christ has died, it would be a blessing if each of us can say that with the same conviction. St. Paul would write as much to a young pastor named Timothy when he says, I've fought the good fight, I've finished the race, I've kept the faith. For Joyce, this was a faith begun in the waters of holy baptism. It's how we began our time together this morning. In the waters of holy baptism, her sins were washed away. And God brought her forward as a new creation in Jesus. Her faith would be nurtured as she heard the precious word of God and received Christ's very body and blood in the Lord's Supper, bringing her forgiveness of sins and strength for the life of faith that she had been given. I imagine for Joyce, her faith in Jesus and the comfort that she found in his love and forgiveness was much like being wrapped and snuggled into a familiar quilt. You know, the ones that have been used before. The crispness of new fabric has softened, and having it wrapped around, you feel quite safe and comfortable. Joyce had such a confident assurance in Jesus as her Savior. I imagine much like that of a familiar quilt. And she knew that in him the debt of all her sin had been paid in full. Quilts and a warm loaf of bread. Nothing is quite so welcoming. Nothing quite makes a home that it is, those two items. Connie shared that for him and Joyce, their connection to Emmanuel began with Monday night visitors to their home following a visit on Sunday worship here. And what did those visitors bring? A welcome to Emmanuel and a loaf of bread. That loaf of bread would lead to regular Sunday worship here at Emmanuel as they made this their church home. Until her health caused issues, you would see Joyce and Connie here almost every Sunday, present to hear the word, because we know that God works through his word, present to receive Christ's body and blood. 
When help kept Joyce from coming here to God's house, God's word and his sacrament would be brought to her through the visits of pastors and vicars. By God's grace, Joyce always had a desire for the gifts of God in his love and forgiveness that were hers in Jesus. Thursdays, a day like today, would find Joyce in the fellowship hall along with the other quilting ladies, preparing quilts of all sorts and of designs and colors, quilts made with care and love that would go to faraway places and bring Christian love into the lives of people at times when they probably needed it most. And while Joyce was certainly blessed by the lives of dear family and friends that touched her life, as you all did, she was one who gave more than she received. That is just who she was. She showed her love through acts of service to family and to friends, and certainly through her quilting, showing love to complete strangers, people she would most likely never even meet this side of heaven. Joyce was unashamedly Lutheran. I noticed, and you can't see it, but Luther's seal is on the back of her urn. She knew that she was saved by grace through faith in Jesus. She knew it wasn't her work, but it was a gift of God. Even though she was baptized as an infant and her grandfather was a pastor, there was a time where she and Connie were in their own sort of wilderness wandering, knowing of God's love, but not faithfully, not very faithful in attending church. But someone took the time to share the gospel message with them again, to care about their eternal salvation for a moment just as this. And that was it. Connie shared that they were never apart from the church again. Joyce departed this life with a strong conviction of who Jesus was and what he did for her. She knew that in her sin, she could not save herself. She needed Jesus and his forgiveness to do that for her. Wherever they lived, Joyce always found faithful friends. As a mother, Joyce was ever-loving, always putting the needs of her family before her own. She, you probably experienced some of that as those who knew her well. As a wife, she was a spouse that God knew that Connie needed. Connie assured that she was always there for me, no matter what. She was faithful. She always stood by me. Joyce was always content. She never complained, even in the worst of times. Health-wise, Joyce's last two years were difficult. There was a lot of ups and downs, both physically, as we witnessed, and emotionally. And yet, even as her life was drawing to a close, there was often a smile from her. She knew her Savior. She wasn't afraid to die. I know where I'm going, she would say. And somewhere along the line, the words of Isaiah 41 became a favorite for Joyce. And maybe today, they'll become a favorite for you. The Lord says, you are my servant. I've chosen you and not cast you off. As a baptized child of God, Joyce could always look to her baptism and know with certainty just whose child she was and what that meant for her life. It meant that her life was intimately connected to Jesus who died and rose from the dead for Joyce and for all believers. The Lord says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. What a testimony this must have been for Joyce and it should be for us. That in the midst of things that may bring uncertainty and fear, that it is God himself who says, fear not, I am here. Don't be discouraged. I am your God. I am with you. It's God who says, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Throughout her life, Joyce was blessed to know the strength and help of her loving God. How many times did Joyce lean on the strength of God's righteous right hand? Maybe that's where you're leaning on today, that right hand of strength that the Lord is holding you. It is an assurance, it was for her, and it can be for us, and we can hold on to it, because the one who makes the promise is God himself. He says, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. In the midst of pain and loss, 
When joy abounds or when the tears of sorrow flow unchecked, the confidence we have is that it is not us who acts. It was not Joyce who was expected to act, but rather it is God himself who makes the promise. It is God himself who brings the comfort of his presence and his help. Did you catch, I didn't expect to give you an English lesson, but did you catch the first person pronoun in these words? God says, it is I. I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. I have chosen you. I am with you. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. I am the one who helps you. And to this assurance, what was Joyce's response? I'm not afraid to die. I know where I'm going. And you and I can say, we know where she is. She's with her Lord because of his promise to her. Her confidence rested in Jesus and his life, death, and resurrection. Life, death, and resurrection for Joyce. And it's for all who look to him for salvation. May God graciously grant each of us that same confidence to know Jesus, our Savior. That by his death on the cross, our sins are taken away. And by his resurrection from the dead, we too have the eternal hope of a resurrected life in body and soul with him forever. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God which passes all, understanding guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now with a hymn that reminds us where our faith looks. It looks to the Lord in the hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, hymn number 702. Please rise for prayer.
Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the gate of death and the grave we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith your Holy Spirit, that he may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope. In the communion of your church and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love, who have departed in the faith. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe in and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, may his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. But congregation, please be seated for a closing hymn, number 761 in the hymn book in front of you, Rock of Ages.
on behalf of the family, Connie and the family, I want to say thank you for being here to share in this time with them for this service. But they'd also like to invite you downstairs for some lunch fellowship and uh, that we can continue to support, uh, support the family and encourage them. And, and consider our hope uh, that is in Christ, who is resurrection and life eternal, the same hope that is for Joyce. And God bless your time today as you fellowship downstairs. We'll lead the family out and invite you all to follow.